Let's talk about everything parents need to know about cleft lip and palate. What is cleft lip and palate? My name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist here to explain. Cleft lip is a congenital condition where there is a split or an open section of the upper lip, sometimes extending as high as the nose. There are two different types of cleft lip, unilateral on one side or bilateral on both sides. Cleft palate is also a congenital defect, but the location of the cleft palate is on the palate, the roof of the mouth, often leaving an opening between the mouth and the nasal cavity. Depending on the severity of each, a child's cleft lip and palate will often impact their ability to nurse or take a bottle. It can also cause complications with eating in general. In addition, cleft palate can also make your child more prone to hearing problems, ear infections, and speech development. So why does this happen? Why does cleft lip and palate occur? Experts don't necessarily know, but it's thought that it's from a combination of genetic issues, although it does not follow a traditional inheritance pattern, as well as it might be from environmental exposures to the mother during pregnancy. Factors such as smoking and diabetes and epileptic drugs may all potentially increase the chances of an unborn baby developing a cleft. However, there really is no solid evidence. There are just some statistics that show more clefts are seeming to occur in pregnant people who fall into these categories. So most cases simply occur randomly for whatever reason. When some babies are developing in the womb, the skin and underlying tissues in their mouth can't fuse together properly. And according to the CDC in the United States, about one in 1600 babies are born with a cleft lip and palate, one in 1700 are born with a cleft palate only, and one in 2800 are born with a cleft lip only. A cleft can be diagnosed as early as around the 13th week of pregnancy, which is when those areas of the face and mouth typically start to fuse together. And by 20 weeks, almost all sonograms can rule out cleft lip since those tissues tend to be visible. However, a cleft palate usually isn't visible. So you're more likely to find out if your child has or doesn't have a cleft lip before they are born. Whereas with a cleft palate, you might not know there is an issue until after your child is born. Either way, clefts are one of the most common common birth defects to occur in babies. And because of that, medical specialists have made great gains in how to treat and manage them. Surgery will generally resolve any and all problems. All those complications we mentioned, eating, speaking, etc. Cleft surgery is very successful in giving full functionality to your child. Cleft lip surgery will usually be done around three months to six months of age. Cleft palate is usually done a little later, more around six to 12 months. Cleft palate repairs are not visible from the outside. You won't see that they had any surgery whereas cleft lip repair will usually leave a subtle scar just under the nose, but with today's technology and medical advances, it's barely noticeable. And it's also important to know that children with severe clefts often require follow-up surgeries as they grow and develop, especially if there are any missing teeth or the shape of the dental arch is affected, but more isolated cleft lips often only require that one single surgery to permanently correct them. It just depends on the severity. And before we go, a big question I often get from parents is, is there anything I can do to prevent my baby from getting a cleft, but unfortunately, aside from eliminating any possible risk factors, such as smoking during pregnancy, there may not be a lot parents can do to help prevent their child from having a cleft. There are a few studies that show supplementing with folic acid may possibly help reduce the chances of a cleft. Folic acid is usually found in prenatal vitamins, so if you're already taking those, then you're good, but of course, always talk with your OBGYN if that's a concern of yours. And lastly, after your baby's surgery, this is something probably the most important part of this video, if if your baby is going through cleft lip and palate surgery, be sure to schedule an appointment with a pediatric dentist and or a myofunctional therapist. A myofunctional therapist can be especially helpful for their oral health in confirming everything is stable with their airway, improving how they eat, breathe, and talk properly. So if you have any individual questions, concerns, talk with a myofunctional therapist, they will be able to help you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. If you want more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com, and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.